Hey guys, welcome back. Today's an exciting day because we are going to get to finally start talking about circuits and how to build them. There's been so much talk about Ohm's Law, current, potential difference, and R, and now we're actually going to see those things all act together and be able to operate in a more practical sense. We'll be able to see what's going on here. So first, um, a simple series circuit, we, there's a couple of different symbols that we're going to have to identify. The first thing we're going to see is something that looks like this, all right? Something you're going to see like this, and this is going to be used to be a cell slash a battery. And when we see these things in circuits, these are going to be our potential difference, all right? Our voltage. We are just going to use straight lines. Straight lines are going to represent wires. And then we are going to see something that looks like this, a little squiggly. And those are going to represent resistors or the things that are going to give the circuit some resistance. All right, now there's going to be two types of uh, circuits that we're going to deal with, two types. And when you're doing your work, you might see series. And the other one is going to be parallel, okay? Now the first circuit that we want to look at is just the series circuit. And the reason they call it simple is because it is very, very, very simple to draw, and the rules for them are very, very easy to understand. For a series circuit, we are going to see there are going to be the components. There's going to be a battery or cell. There has to be wires that are conductors, meaning electrons can flow. All right, and then there will be some resistors. And there could be an infinite amount in this course, generally we'll do between one and three. But here's the thing that makes this a series circuit. All components are connected end to end. Meaning there are no intersections. All right, there's gonna be no decision making for current at all. And here's what I mean. Let's draw one right now. Let's start. I'm going to draw a battery. Then I'm going to have this come up. It is going to hit a resistor, another resistor, and maybe a third resistor. And that is a series circuit. See that there's current flow. So there's going to be some I that is going to come up here, make a right. It's going to go through the resistor. There is only one path that the current can follow and then it comes back to the battery. So there is only one path, no choices for current, all right? Now we're gonna have to label the parts of this circuit. So I will label these and I will say, this is gonna be V total. So V total is what I'm gonna get from the battery. I will label this R1, this would be R2, and this will be R3. Now what we're going to see is each resistor, and this is going to be the important thing when solving, each resistor has a V, an I, and an R. So every resistor has to follow Ohm's law, V equals IR. Every single place. So that means here there's going to be V1, and there also is going to be I1. And here there's going to be V2 and I2. Here there's going to be V3, uh, V3 and I3. And then over here we're going to have I total and R total. And R total will have a different name. We'll see that in one second. Now also in series there are rules besides Ohm's law that are just for series. And those are gonna be given on your reference table. So once again, if I draw this little circuit again, all right, and I'm gonna have R1, V1, and I1. I'm gonna have R2, V2, and I2. I'm gonna have R3, V3, and I3. And then I'm gonna have VT, IT, and RT with a different name that I'll get to in one second. And the rules state this. 
in a simple, simple circuit, I total is equal to I1, which is equal to I2, which is equal to I3, etc. So in a parallel, in a series circuit, not a parallel, in a series circuit, I is equal everywhere. That is super, super important. And it's the thing that makes series circuits so safe. The next rule we're going to look at is V total. V total is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. So we will see that in a series circuit, the V is the sum of all these. All right. And you might see these called voltage drops. And the reason for that is that if I have V total equal to 12 volts, right, every single time I go over a voltage, this total will drop. So I would say maybe 4 volts, V2 equals 4 volts, and V3 equals 4 volts. Each one of these is called a drop, and the sum of these will equal 12 volts. And the last is we need R total. But like I just said, there's a different name for R total, and we call this REQ. And all that means is this is an equi that's called the equivalent resistance. REQ is just a fancy name for R total. And in series, R1 equal uh is the sum again R2 plus R3 all right so as we saw with voltage these are going to be R total equals the sum of all R's all right now that may not mean that much to you right now but when we see there's different rules for the other cir uh, circuits you'll understand where I'm coming from but this this and this, these are all on your reference table. So you do not have to memorize these rules. But what you do need to do is you need to know that this is a series circuit because there's only one loop. All right, if we look, it starts here. Current can only have one loop. All right, so that's how you know that this is a series circuit. Let's take a look at an example. Let's say I have three resistors connected in series. All right, and they are connected to a battery. And R1 equals four ohms. R2 equals six ohms. And R3 equals eight ohms. And the battery has a voltage of 36 volts. Now, it does not seem like I'm given an information, but with this, I can solve. With this, for every V, I, and R in the entire circuit. Okay, and guys, this is where things are going to get difficult, but you do not need to overthink them, and I'm going to show you how we can make this really easy. We know, and this is going to be, oh gosh, guys, a super, super important chart, so please pay attention. It has, everything is Ohm's Law, all right? So everything needs to obey V, I, and R. Okay, so when you're figuring, and this is going to go for parallel as well. Everything has a V, an I, and an R. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to write how many resistors I have. I have resistor 1. I have resistor 2. I have resistor 3. And I have totals. Now we plug in our givens so that we can see 
if there's any gaps, because we're going to use V equals IR across all of these. All right. So now I'm going to put my givens in black. All right. So at R1, we don't know the voltage. We don't know the I. Okay. And we, but we do know that the R there is going to be four ohms. At R2, the only thing we know is six ohms. And at R3, we know eight ohms. Okay. And the other thing we know is V total is 36 volts. And we see there's not a lot here, but what we want to do is find the one, the row with one unknown. That one unknown is here. Okay? So now from here we have to look at our rules, right? REQ is the sum. So if I take the sum of this plus this, I can find out what that's going to be. We see that REQ is going to be 18 ohms because REQ equals R1 plus R2 plus R3. That was from our rules. Now, next, we find the box with the one unknown. The next one we'll look at, and we see it quite easily, is now we have this row. It's kind of like playing Sudoku here, where we need this. And we know that V equals IR. So we're solving for I here. Okay? So we know R total. We know R. We know I. We can see, uh, we know V. We see that if I do 36 divided by 12, I is going to be 2 amps. And the beautiful thing about series is I total equals I1, which equals I2, which equals I3, etc. So now I just plugged in every single one of these boxes. And then the glorious thing happens. Last, but certainly not least, once I get to I, now I can say V equals I times R, 8 volts. V equals IR, 12 volts. And V equals IR, 16 volts. And then we can check because this plus this has to equal this because of our rule V total equals V1 plus V2 plus V3. All right, so we're going to see a lot more examples of using this. All I need to do is give you these little givens, and you can solve for this whole chart. But this chart right here, guys, is going to be, it seems time-consuming, time but it's going to be really, really important. We'll look at more examples in class. Guys, if this confuses you a little, write down some questions that you can bring them to class and ask me, hey, Finn, where did this 2 come from or how did I get this 18? It's going to be really, really important that we understand that going into, uh, going into parallel circuits.